um, Bluth, John Bluth, yeah, yeah, uh, the Bluth guy. He um, he created this uh, little mouse character, Fibo is what he called. Um, they took him to court, and they were saying that he didn't come up with the design until he started working in the studio. Um, all during the, the trial, or uh, during the court proceedings, they kept saying, uh, the Disney lawyers were saying, well, we know he didn't actually draw, he didn't use any of our, any of our material, we know that, we know that. Um, but it's just funny that he would come up with the mouse character, you know, and he's working in a studio where the most famous character is Mouse. We seem to think that that's the reasoning behind how he conjured up this character. You know, but that's hard to prove. That's really hard to prove. And so he won the court battle. And when he won, it struck a blow to the Disney Studios in a way that now what they do, like I said earlier, what they do is in your contract when you start working for Disney, several pages down, it actually it, it's very explicit about you making designs in the studio drawing in the studio. They're real explicit about that. In other words, if you want to take on a, a challenge, just go and go work for Disney and take their paper and start sketching out your little character and then see if you can get the character out of the studio. You know, pretty sure you're going to be stopped. Pretty sure you're going to be stopped. You know, they're going to ask for it and they're not going to give it back. You know, and even if you, they may even be sarcastic enough to say, well, you ask them, well, what are you going to do with that, uh, what are you going to do with that drawing? I don't know. They may make it into like a, a feature film. I don't know. Well, then that'd be good because then I'd be famous. No, I don't think so because it belongs to us. Who said that? We do. Uh, when you go to Burbank and you go down to the Disney Studios, uh, they have several studios in California, but the main one is in Burbank. On the 10th floor, that, that whole floor is all legal. It's just this all. There's nothing but lawyers and stuff on the 10th floor. So if something happens, that's where they send you to start talking to legal terms. Uh, but again, uh, that's just a point of interest, uh, just a thing I wanted to point out with Disney. 1928, Steamboat Willie actually comes on the scene. It was the first successful sound animated cartoon. The, if you want to know what really made Walt Disney uh, the household name or, or the what gave him all of his fame was the fact that he bought into this. He bought into sound and he bought into color. He did that. He became like uh, he became more than just a filmmaker slash animator. When he bought the three color system. He became he became the the main guy on the block. He was the main guy, you know, because he bought the three color system and he sold it or he leased it out to studios. So that when the motion picture studios, the big five studios, were making their films. Uh, and they were actually releasing these films. The little animated insert in between the film and the newsreel, if it was a Disney film, it was in color. And that actually, that actually took a, that actually just changed everything. I mean, the, the audience were like, you know, they, they just were overwhelmed. They're like, wow, it's, it's, wow, it's all pretty, it's in color, oh my God. You know, and news spread fast. <laughs> and uh, the studio heads, they realized that this had a lot of potential, so what they decided to do is they wanted to buy it, is what they wanted. Uh, well, of course, Disney being the businessman that he was, he decided, okay, I can lease it to you. I can do that. I can't let you buy it, though. I can lease it to you. And thus, he made money, hand over fist. He had, there was money that actually was just, money was coming to Walt Disney without him actually even doing anything. Which was a, it was like a, a brilliant business uh, venture. It was just brilliant. Um, so when that occurred, Disney became, he started to become the Disney that we know of. It was late, it would be later on, and I'll talk about that later, but it would be later on that Walt found out that although you could have a, an animated cartoon that's in color and it can have sound, you still have to worry about competition. Um, Meaning that when Walt Disney was, was starting off, uh, I'm stepping ahead, but I'll just do this just to explain this. When he started off, most of the people who worked in Disney Studios 
later became the animators that we, with their characters that we know and love today. I mean, Walter Lance worked there. He created Woody Woodpecker. Uh, Otto Messimer, uh, the guy who created Popeye, you know, in the very first Superman, he worked there. Uh, Art Babbitt worked there, you know. Um, Chuck Carl Stalling, the guy who later became the music, the music genius for Warner Brothers, he worked there, you know. And later these guys kind of left. They left. They worked there, then they left. They left Disney. And when they left, their cartoon ideas took on their whole, their own like. They took on their own entity and they became what we know today. And that became a real challenge for Walt Disney because it would be the Warner Brothers Studios that actually would put like a, a real, it would put a, put a sour taste in Walt Disney's mouth. Warner Brothers did what, what Walt Disney wanted to do. Um, Warner Brothers decided that a cartoon could actually, could solely be based on violence and it would be wonderful. <laughs> it would be wonderful. And so, <laughs> What Disney had to contend with was that, you know, even though his cartoons had like a, they had like a, a little jingle, all of them had all of them had like a little theme where Disney's cartoons were silly symphonies. Warner Brothers, of course, was they were uh, Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Uh, there was another one called Happy Harmonies. Uh, all of them had like a little musical jingle that went with them. But Warner Brothers decided that what they would do is they would add violence to theirs. Theirs would be, they would not only have a story, but the story would actually have something where somebody was going to get hurt in a way, in a large way. And, and they, they used that as like the vehicle to make their story. Yeah, it's okay, well, this is a good story about this guy who actually finds some money and then he goes and, and he loses the money. What if the money came to life? And then machine guns just start shooting the guy. That'd be awesome. Let's do that. You know? And so they... They changed the look of how animation was going to be viewed. And Disney, for years, uh, while Walt was alive, he never mentioned that, you know, he never made mention, like, uh, he never just blatantly said, you know, I, I hate those guys over there at Warner Brothers, you know. But there was always moments where he would try to attempt to do something like that, and, and the attempt always, it always backfired, you know. So he stayed with what was safe. He decided to use like uh, the stories from Grimm's fairy tales. He would use those stories and he would animate those. Um, but Warner Brothers, you know, they they became like the uh, they became highly uh, uh, highly acclaimed just by the fact that their cartoons were so violent. You know, the more violent they were, the, the more interesting they became to like to younger audiences. People people really warmed up to them. They really liked them. Um, the first Warner Brothers done in 1930. Uh, these cartoons right here uh, actually aren't the ones that we that we actually uh, enjoy. It wasn't, and I'm skipping here, I'll just skip this way. It wasn't until 1943 with the creation of uh, Bugs Bunny that Warner Brothers actually like became like a, they, they became like a force to be reckoned with. I mean, in other words, when they came up with this character, the Porky Pig character, which was their first character, uh, when Bugs came on the screen, they never had to worry about Disney at all anymore. They had to worry about Disney. They were on, they were on a whole different thing then. They, they were onto something different, totally different. And they, they say that when he hit the, when he, when they created that character design, they had uh, launched something that other studios started to mimic. They said, okay, well, if they're doing violent cartoons, we're going to do violent cartoons too. And everybody's doing that. And let's just do that. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Um, I have a PowerPoint to show you guys.